want to give a hand clap of praise for the man of God and um, who blessed the apostle for my own Thank you for this opportunity. I thank you. And first, we want to give honor to God. Peace that surpasses 
understanding. So when I come around you, I'm in peace. Hallelujah. Amen. So the type of person that we want to be to value others and the type of people that we want around us so that we're made valuable, right? Amen. So we want to know the type of person. And I'm about to tell y'all the type of person you want to be and the type of person you want around you. Amen. So if you could turn to me with Matthew chapter 5 real quick. And we're going to navigate this text really quickly because I only got 10 minutes. Amen. Work it, work it. Glory to God. Amen. I love this text. And it's so familiar. They call it the Sermon on the Mount. So the Beatitudes, right? So I'm going to be starting, of course, at verse 3. Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 is where we're going. And we're about to learn the type of person that we need to be, the type of characteristics we need to hold, and the type of characteristics that people around us need to hold so that we are made valuable in his sight, in their sight, and then we're made valuable in their sight. Amen? Amen. So this is the type of person you want to be. Jesus goes and he says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so didn't we just talk about the kingdom of heaven before? Amen. We said that that is a gift to be able to inhabit the presence of God. So he said we are blessed. He said those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Go to verse 4. He says blessed are they that mourn, but they shall be comforted. Because if I'm mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I know that the comforter lives inside of us. That the Holy Ghost is the comforter. So when I have the comforter, anyone who mourns shall be comforted by the comforting, which is the gift. Amen. Hallelujah. Move on to verse 5. It says, Blessed are they who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So if I'm able to inherit the earth and everything that God designed it to be from the beginning, not talking about what man has messed it up to be, but I'm talking about from the beginning, right? So if I can be able to inherit the earth that is good, that God looked down and he said, this is good, right? He said, blessed are those who are meek, so we must walk in meekness. And if we don't know what meekness is, that's humility and that's humbleness, right? Amen. So you want somebody that's humble, right? To be, You want to be humble, right? So you can inherit the earth, amen. And you want to mourn so you can be comforted, right? Amen. Because I know that the Bible says that he removed the heart of stone and gave us a heart of flesh. So now we're able to feel and be sensitive, right, to his movement, to the people around us. So I know that's how I can be comforted when I'm sensitive. Glory to God. Moving on to verse 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So if I'm continuously hungering and thirsting after the righteousness of God, I know that I'm going to be filled. Right? Because that's our ultimate goal. We are sealed to the day of redemption. So we must be filled with the Holy Ghost or we're not getting up out of here. So if I want to hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God, I know that I'm going to be filled. So I know all the people connected to me, the people around me to be filled. So I'm blessed. Y'all not talking back to me here today. Woo, hallelujah. So next verse, it says, Blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So I know the person I want to be around me to be merciful. So when I fall, they're not looking at me like, mm. And then, right? Right? And I know when they fall, I'm not looking at them like, mm. And yes, I want somebody around me to be merciful, right? And I want to be merciful to the people around me. Because that's so important. As the body of Christ, we become so distracted. We have become so just all focused on what our purpose and our plan is, right? Well, our plan is to gather souls for God, right? I'm not gathering souls to me. I'm leading them back to Christ. Because he's the only one that can save, right? So if I'm merciful and I show the mercy of God, they'll know, oh, we serve a merciful that I'm not deserving, right? So that keeps us humble. Y'all not talking back to me. Right? Ooh, hallelujah. So next, I think it's verse 8. It says, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then, so I know if anybody has a pure heart, they're going to be pure-hearted towards me. And I know that they're going to have no ill intentions when they talk to me. They just want to see me win. They just want to help me, right? Amen. So I know I want to have a pure heart because it says that I'm blessed if I have a pure heart because I know that I'll be able to see God and not many people are going to see God. If you think about all of the heart sins, the enemy, the jealousy, the hatred, the strife, the malice, hallelujah. So I know I'm going to be rid of those things so the people connected to me can experience the pureness of God because I'm walking with a pure heart. Amen. So I want that same thing for 
the people who are connected to me. I want them to be walking with pureness. I want them to be able to have a pure heart so they can see God. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. The next thing is, I believe it's verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So I know I want to walk in peace, right? Because we know that that's one of the pieces of the armor of God. Our feet are shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. So we know when we preach the gospel, we come in peace, right? We know when we walk in peace that our the Lord makes our enemies be at peace with us, right? Right? Hallelujah. So if I know I want to be a peacemaker, I don't want to be the type of person that stirs up trouble. Because if I'm always stirring up trouble, then nothing ever is going good. peacemakers, right? I want the people around me to look for the good, right? I want the people around me to be peacemakers and I want to be a peacemaker so I can be blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the next thing is verse 10. Go to verse 10. It says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. And then next verse 11 says, blessed are ye when men shall revile and persecute you and say all against you falsely for my sake. Amen? So I want to talk about that real quick. Because I feel like sometimes we have a misconception of what persecution is. Okay, so check this out. As I was sitting here studying this, right, I'm going to turn your attention real quickly to verses 10 and 11, and it says, blessed are those who men when they um, persecute you, right? Okay, so if people always talk about you being a liar or a cheater, right? and that's all that you do, that's not being persecuted. Because if I am not mistaken, I believe that Jesus said falsely, right? So that means it's not true, right? But no, 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 if I said if that's all you do, that's not persecution. That's just holding you accountable, right? So to get back to our text, 
when we have these characteristics that we just went through, right? Being meek, right? Um, being peacemakers, right? When we have those characteristics, we add value not only to ourselves, but to the people around us in our environment. Yes. Amen? Yes. So when the people that are attached to us have these same characteristics we just talked about in Matthew chapter 5, then they add value to us. Because I know that God is living within them, right? And I can see the character of God. I can see the fruits of the Spirit working in their lives. I can see that they're changing. But I can't see any change in you. I don't need you in my life. No, that's extra warfare. That's extra open doors. That's extra open gates, right? I don't need that type of warfare in my life. I got my own warfare for the enemy. for just preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. So when we have these type of people in our lives and they care to these care they carry these ca characteristics. Sorry, Lord. When we carry these characteristics, which I know I want to carry these characteristics. I want to work so hard so that the people that are around me, they can see these same characteristics in me, right? And the people around me, I can see these same characteristics in them. And then, so I want to add value to the people around me, to my environment, so I can make my environment better. And that's that piece of walking in excellence, right? In excellence in anything I do because I'm adding value to my environment. And then, glory to God. So I know that when the people are connected to me are walking this way and I'm walking this way, we're both blessed. Right? So this can go back to the blessings of the Lord, make it rich. No sorrow, right? So if the people around me are blessed and I'm blessed, that's a double blessing. Yeah. Ooh, glory to God. So I know that we're both blessed individually and together. Yeah. Now that's what I call a blessing from Jesus. Not the houses, not the cars, not necessarily the jobs, not necessarily the open doors. No, this is the blessing. Yeah. This 